Do you have any advice for anyone looking to get involved with their local CSI chapter? Number one, I'd say do it. And, and number two, <laughs> um, sometimes a good way to get get more immersed in you know what the chapter is all about is to to be on a committee. Yeah, and actually do something and not just be a member. Mm -hmm. And I think that goes for any organization. If there's something you're passionate about, just to you can always be a member somewhere. But if you're not, if you're not putting in the effort to do other things, then you're not going to get as much out of it. If I'm making sense. I, I, I've always felt that way. So. And you can always learn new ways of doing the newsletter. I know I taught you in design, so <laughs> then you can work a little bit more efficiently with the newsletter. Do you have any advice? for others who are new to specifications or thinking about leading specifications for their project, maybe not for their office yet, but want to tackle doing the specs. I, I think I would definitely uh, look into the, the CSI certifications, the, uh, the CDT and the CCS. Um, first one is, certified documents technologist and then the second one is certified construction specifier one is the prerequisite to the other but when you study for those you will you you find out the breadth of what you need to know as a uh, as a spec writer if your firm subscribes to a, a master guide system i would say get into it and and poke around and get familiar with it and kind of understand what what those are all about. Yeah, and so that would be more um, different programs <laughs> like eSpec, um, or I interviewed Melody with Conspectus that has their own platform. Because um, mm -hmm. I'm sure you started out with handwriting specs, moving to Word, yes. and now using more cloud-based softwares to help in the process. Mm -hmm. How do you feel that growth has changed how you write specs? I think you, I think you can do it quicker if if you know what you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. okay. If you don't, it it can maybe give you a, a false sense that 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 you do uh, because I think just about all the programs available now are are, are smart systems. You can kind of pick and choose your way through those and you may end up with something that you think is, you know, correct or accurate and may have confusing choices in there, that sort of thing. I remember you're helping me with specs this one time and we were going through what's needed on a project. <laughs> And you were just crossing out entire giant sections of the spec and it was stressing me out. I'm like, I don't know. Do I, can I delete that yet? So I like a little bit more of the online platforms. It has kind of the history to if you want to bring something back or if something changes. But I remember you're like, nope, don't need any of this stuff. Cross everything out. And I'm like, I panicked like a few years out of school and not knowing what I'm doing. Yeah. And that, that was probably me you know going going overboard that's just just so many years of experience you know you just by looking don't, don't need that yeah um, well i even did that on drawings too if it was you know you have your standard door elevations or something and you're doing a small project that you don't need 15 door elevations you just right. need one or two i would take that drafting view and i'd duplicate it and I'd put the copy in the actual drawing set or leave a copy as an archive in case the project architect or PM was like, you did this all wrong, bring this back. So I like having copies. I can't remember what it was, um, but definitely crossing stuff out and in Word was definitely stressful, but you know, also didn't understand all the different language parts. Well, the good thing with the system we use now is none of it goes away. It, it, it's 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 all in there if you want to bring it back. Do you think we'll ever move to not having printed out documents between drawings and specs? Aren't we kind of there now? 
for the most part. Does anybody, anybody print paper copies of specs anymore? <laughs> I think we always need that archive. I will say I've been in like job trailers where they have the printed set and they have the project mm -hmm. manual, but it's off in the corner collecting dust and everybody's just on tablets checking and seeing what's yeah. going on. Well, you know, I think some specs still say that, you know, you have to keep a, a set of a documents in the job trailer type of thing. Yeah. And I'm learning a lot with even the CDT exam that I thought it was a lot more <clears throat> spec heavy in terms of learning, but it's actually a lot more contracts and specs. So a little bit more of that, the general conditions up front, how the workflow goes and how a whole project comes together, which I wish I knew earlier <laughs> and had this, should have taken this exam while studying for the ARES. Well, I, you know, I see that all the time, and I think that's a, a, a general weakness with architects is that they don't know or understand what's in the general conditions. And that's that document is, is used on the agreement on just about every project. You know, yeah, and it, unless it's it, special it, for a particular owner. It, it, it like... describes, you know, the the roles of the the. Of the uh, the parties to the contract and and describes things that um, can happen as a result of the project and how that gets resolved. And yeah, and if you have any issues on the job site, it can be a guide plate for you there to know what was actually agreed upon and knowing you can look there for something. You know, and I'll get questions like, where where does it say in the general conditions that such and such? And I'll say, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't read it. You don't know where it is. You may have seen that in an owner's supplementary conditions, which modifies the general conditions. But it's not in the general conditions. When you QC documents, I have seen yeah. over the years that a lot of people will just do quality checks on the drawings. And nobody ever opens up the specs to cross check the specs. Do you have any advice on how that could be better integrated? Uh, should be looking at both. It, it's like I tell young architects who who are you know a, a, a attempting to do specs on their project. I, I said you know make your spec notes as you, as you're doing your drawings. You know, even the, even the little stuff. You know, if you if there's things you want a certain way, make a note of it. The specifications don't always have to be in spec language. Sometimes we have to, you know, describe it in prose what we want. Um, but the, the 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 point is is to to build them both together. And and so if you if you check if you check one and don't check the other, that's you know that's kind of pointless. What would happen if you only looked at the specs? You know you. Yeah. Then there's glaring issues or things don't align and creates change orders or they install one of them and that's not the one you wanted. No. You discover it later. I mentioned Fred Watts. He he's our quality uh, control guy, and you know he he does both. And so you know he'll he'll tell me, hey, we don't have a spec for this, or you know this is this is in conflict with the drawings type of thing. Do you have any advice for the project architect leading the drawings and knowing when something should be in the drawings and when something should be in the specs instead? A general division that says that the, that the drawings show where it is and the size of it and how many, and the specifications, you know, this uh, describe the uh, the quality and and how to how to make it and install it type of thing. So. Um, you know, you, you generally want to stay away from 
calling out quantities in in, in the spec. And unless, for instance, you know, you're asking for something specific and, you know, that maybe it's an accessory that, that goes with a, uh, a marker board or something, you know, you ask for, you know, two, two complete sets of markers, but that's, that's something you could show in the drawings anyway. So. Yeah. And you don't want to show it 20 times over in the drawings. It's easier to own that because you can just call them to like that marker board within that marker board they know they need to get these accessories with it check out the full discussion from this bite of advice here if you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on more mentor dino content